Exponential functions are hard to wrap our heads around. People, including me, have a really difficult time understanding how rapidly exponential functions can grow. And so it was with a bit of awe that I ran some assumptions through a simple formula and discovered something truly amazing. Tesla almost has to solve full self-driving this year. Are you ready to nerd out over some numbers and spreadsheets? If so, let's dive into why Tesla almost certainly will have full self-driving solved to any reasonable standard before one calendar year from now. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I want to say that this entire idea came out of a discussion via email with Elias, who thought of the idea of mapping full self-driving progress mathematically. I took the idea and ran with it, but it's a really cool idea. But before we even dive into this, I want to start with something really cool that came out of a comment thread to the video that I just did today with my wife. So you can check that out if you want to. But anyway, the question was raised as to how much energy it takes for a Tesla Model S Plaid to do that crazy acceleration and to do the quarter mile run in like 9.25 ish seconds. All right, so here we have it. <laughs> How much power does it take to accelerate a Model S Plaid through a quarter mile run? So I'm going to use metric units because we want to end up in watts and I hate imperial units. And by the way, you can check out a video above that I did it ages ago about why I hate the imperial unit system so much. But anyway, so we're going to use metric. So a quarter mile is 402 meters. All of this is, you know, approximate, not down to multiple digits of precision because we're just estimating things here anyway. Uh, the time it took, Jay Leno's run was 9.247 seconds, so let's just call it 9.25 seconds. The car, the Model S Plaid, according to Tesla's website, weighs 2162 kilograms, and the top speed was 152 miles per hour in Jay Leno's run, and that's 68 meters per second, again, approximately. So then we get to some nice high school physics. We have our distance traveled equals our x naught times our velocity naught times time times one half at squared, which is acceleration times time squared. Uh, x naught is zero because we're starting at zero. Velocity naught is zero because we're starting at zero miles per hour or kilometers per second or meters per second or whatever it is. And then, so what we're interested in this term right here. So we have 402 meters is equal to one half times the acceleration times 9.25 seconds squared. So we can work all that stuff around and we end up with 9.39 meters per second squared. Or remember from your high school math again that gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. So this is 0 0.96 Gs. <laughs> so essentially this is one of those roller coasters that shoots you out the gate or alternatively that cyclotron thing that runs around in circles and plasters you to the wall. That's the craziness of this. So basically what's holding you down to the earth and what's pushing you back in the seat is going to be almost equivalent when you're driving this car at full acceleration. That's assuming constant acceleration. It probably goes up a little bit at certain times and down at others. But anyway, that's pretty crazy for 10 seconds to hold a 1G force backwards. So wow. But anyway, let's talk about the energies involved. So energy is one half MV squared, which we have 0.5 MV squared. So we know we have 0.5. We have our mass, which is 2162 kilograms. We have our maximum velocity of 68 meters per second and we square that and we end up with almost five megajoules five million joules right and so watts is just energy divided by time so we can just take this uh, number of joules we can divide it by 9.25 seconds and we end up with approximately 540 kilowatts so remember that the fastest chargers for tesla at least out there right now are 250 kilowatt chargers so they're less than half the amount of energy that these batteries are outputting for 10 seconds to do the quarter mile run so that's a pretty impressive feat that we're actually talking about draining twice the energy more than twice the energy out of the batteries during these 10 second runs than the maximum charging speed that you can get at superchargers these days and then of course we can look at the idealized power or the ideal minimum amount of power so that's watts times time but the time is in hours so we have 540 kilowatts times 0 0.0026 hours that's 9.25 seconds and that gives us a 1.39 kilowatt hour theoretical minimum per quarter mile run so it's got to be more than that, right? Because our battery efficiency, from the best of my knowledge, is about 0.9 or 90%. The motor efficiency is about 80%. In other words, getting the uh, energy out of the motor and into the wheels. And then the air drag force at speed, I had to guesstimate this. I just said 40 meters per second. So I kind of, you know, not quite halved it. But anyway, it, it turns out to be about 600 newtons of force pushing the car backwards. So, you know, these at least give us rough estimates and they can give us a, a much more realistic number. So the power realistic would be the theoretical minimum divided by 
0.9 times 0.8 plus 25,945 newtons, newton meters per second or watts. So we add that all together and we get very, very close to two kilowatt hours per quarter mile run. So that is an impressive feat, right? That means that per 10 seconds, they're draining about two kilowatt hours out of the battery. But on the other hand, assuming that the Plaid has about a hundred kilowatt hour battery pack, and who knows, it may be a little bit more than that. But anyway, if it's a hundred kilowatt hour battery pack, that means it can easily do 40 plus runs you know, back to back. And with that larger heat pump that sheds heat, that means they can just keep doing that. And I think that was kind of demonstrated on delivery day because it looked like what they were doing was they had the Tesla employees that were driving people around and around that track. And so they drive around the track, they do the, the really fast run, drive back around again, pick up some more people, do it again, do it again. So it was like the same car doing it over and over again. So that's really, really cool that it's able to keep doing that and it can do 40 potentially as much as 50 of these runs without a recharge. So that is very impressive technology. All right, it's spreadsheet time. So let's talk about why I say that Tesla almost has to solve full self-driving this year. So this is a spreadsheet. I'm gonna explain some of the terms and things like that here as we go, and then we'll just look at the numbers and they will spit out the correct data. So I do make some assumptions here and I will talk about those in a minute. So first we're gonna start with our starting point, which is that there are approximately one and a half million Teslas on the road currently. They've done approximately 35 billion kilometers of full self-driving data or approximately 22 billion miles of full self-driving data. Again, I'm just going to stick with metric. It's a lot easier. Anyway, I, I sort of divided out. If you take 180,000 cars per quarter and you divide that out, you end up with approximately 2,000 new cars per day. So we have to keep adding that to the fleet, right? Because every one of those cars is producing more data. And then uh, if you take 12,000 miles or about 15,000 kilometers per year of driving, uh, on average, you get about 50 kilometers per day of driving. So that's how much, you know, each of these cars is producing per day and every, every new car is producing more of that data. So these numbers so far are pretty solid. The thing I'm going to start making assumptions about is how many interventions per kilometer we have. So I'm saying approximately 0.2, or in other words, if we flip this number around the number of kilometers per intervention, we have about five-ish, five or six kilometers per intervention. So that means that you could drive five or six kilometers before you'd have to disengage the car right now. Now, on the highway, it's much, much, much longer than that. We drove to Buford on Sunday and I did the entire drive, like the whole highway part of it without any interventions whatsoever. But more importantly, it's the city traffic stuff. So, you know, every time right now without the beta version of the software and things, I have to make an intervention to make a left turn, etc. So, but let's just kind of call this a number. It gives us something, right? So we have approximately five kilometers, six kilometers of driving per intervention right now with the amount of data that we have. So how did I arrive at this? Well, I used an exponential function and that's up at the top that says f of x. And you can see there's a really, really large number. I just kind of had to make these numbers work at the beginning a little bit. So, so the 10 billion or whatever is just a bit of a magic number. EXP is just e to the whatever number and then a very, very, very small number times what's in column two. So that's how many kilometers of full self-driving data we had. So that's what I got. And I just kind of played around with these numbers until I got something that you know, gave me a starting point again. So that gave me a starting point of approximately five to six kilometers per intervention right now with the 35 billion kilometers of full self-driving data. And if we shift this over just a second, we can see here, I just wrote this stuff out. So a standard deviation has, there's a single sigma, which is a one standard deviation and then two and then three and then four. So by most accounts, six sigma, to seven sigma is, well, I mean, it's way, way better than human drivers, but if we can attain a six to seven sigma level, it means that even if regulatory approval has not happened, effectively we've got full self-driving that's working. Because at six sigma, we've got approximately 3.4, interventions per million kilometers driven. And at 6.9 sigma, we've got 0.04 <laughs> interventions per million kilometers driven or four per hundred million kilometers driven. In other words, four interventions for every 100 million kilometers of driving. And that's a lot. <laughs> no human being is going to drive that much in their lives. And even with the giant fleets out there, it's only going to be very rare. Now, if anybody expects perfection, there never will be perfection. Human drivers, of course, are not perfect. That's why we haven't insurance. We wouldn't even have to have insurance if we were all perfect drivers. But so you'll never get that. But when you get to the 0.04 per million incidents, you're getting to a place 
where, you know, full self-driving is effectively perfect, even if it's not in fact perfect. All right, so let's start scrolling down. So this is the middle of June right now. Uh, so, you know, this is the middle of June of 2021. So that's day one. And I'm going to just scroll down. And remember, by the way, that Six Sigma is 3.4 per million. And so when we get to approximately day, I think it's 275, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, so there we go. At day 272, so let me just highlight this column, we've got approximately 3.4 incidents or interventions per million kilometers driven. So that's where we actually cross the level of Six Sigma. And if we keep going down to a year, you can see that by day 365 here, we have actually crossed 3.75 times 10 to the negative eighth, which is actually less than 6.9 sigma. That's actually, you know, close to seven sigma um, levels. So that is an incredible, incredible figure. So again, remember, we're talking about um, 0.17 or 0.2 interventions per kilometer driven right now, assuming that right now, within one year, we're going to get to, <laughs> right? So that's the negative one right now. And this is 3.75 to the negative eighth. So that is an incredible growth and that's exponential growth for you right there. All right, and now we get to the graph. Even if the numbers didn't make any sense to you, this graph should make sense to you. So if you look down here, you can see we start off at day one, which is right now, and we've got approximately 0.2 interventions per kilometer. And it just goes along, right? Nothing's much is happening. And we get to somewhere around day 274, which is the date that I said where we reach the six sigma significance level. But you can see it still doesn't look like much, but then it just goes completely ballistic in that last quarter of the year. So, right, so from like March of 2020, to June of 2022, it's going to go nuts. And this exponential, so it doesn't really matter what the exponents are, right? I can change those constants around and it will change the timing of this somewhat, but this factor right here, this little tail that's jumping up at the end is the part that is remarkable and the part that shows that Tesla almost has to solve full self-driving. Because I think it's very conservative to say that we only have approximately 0.2 interventions per kilometer even on city driving, because if you look at the full self-driving beta right now, they're not having to do anything like that. So this is a very conservative starting place. And even with an incredibly conservative starting place, there is no way that Tesla following this curve with the amount of data that they're going to be collecting is not going to be able to solve full self-driving. It just has to happen, and it has to happen within one year. And that's what this graph showed me. And it's kind of mind-blowing. I know, I was blown away by it too. I didn't expect it to be like this. So just remember, we human beings are incredibly poor at dealing with exponential curves. We don't understand exponential curves. But this, this data shows you quite clearly that we are going to jump up to a level where the, the car is basically going to be so much safer than a human being that it would be almost criminal to allow human beings to drive anymore. So that's what we're getting at. And again, like I said, regulatory approval does not have to follow this immediately. It will take some time. There will be a delay. But this shows that Tesla effectively will have solved full self-driving by next year this time. I think it will actually have happened much faster than that. It'll probably be more like six months from now. But I, you just can't argue with these numbers, right? As long as it's following an exponential curve. That's the only real assumption I'm making here. And I think that's a valid assumption because that's the way most of physics works and it should work for this as well. Assuming of course that Tesla can keep ingesting this much data and training their data effectively. So there you have it. Assuming that it's an exponential function and assuming that Tesla can keep ingesting and training on all of this data efficiently, there's almost no question that Tesla has to solve full self-driving effectively this year. So of course, aside from the really, really cool aspect of just going like, wow, look at these exponential curves and look at how amazing it's gonna be to have full self-driving. The other big, big effect this is going to have, well, I mean, it's gonna have a lot of effects and actually you can check that out if you're interested because I just talked about if Tesla solves full self-driving, which it looks like from these numbers they're going to do, assuming they solve full self-driving and they do it relatively quickly, it's going to have a massive effect on the bottom line for Tesla going forward. And of course, that impacts the future stock price of Tesla. Now, again, not a financial analyst by any means. This is just my own opinion about this stuff. Do your own research, etc. 
But these numbers are indicating to me that within a year, Tesla is going to have full self-driving licked. Again, the regulatory approval might lag behind that. It will lag behind that. But somebody's going to start making this happen. And I hear Miami is actually really, really forward looking and they might actually allow it very, very soon. So it's going to start to happen and that's going to have a material impact on Tesla's stock price. Yes, some of that is already priced into the valuation of their stock, but a lot more is not because a lot of analysts don't understand this. And even, you know, even me who understands exponentials, like, you know, kind of, but you know, you just don't have that like in your gut feeling for it. You really have to look at a spreadsheet and you have to look at the numbers to really understand it. But I hope this really helps to drive home the point that Tesla with their data lead almost has to solve full self-driving. And that, my friends, is gigantic news. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and you got a twofer in this one. I hope you found it extra fun and extra informative. Anyway, if you did, please do like it so other people can find it since that's how YouTube works. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You all are wonderful. Really, thank you all so much. Your support is amazing. The Discord discussions, the email discussions, all of this stuff is, you know, mentally really cool as well as financially helpful. So thank you all so much. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200 or $300 until June 17th. And fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600 or $2,000 until June 17th. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And of course, don't forget about our merch store, which has awesome t-shirts like Tesla Rockets for the People, Don't Mess with Tesla, other t-shirts, tumblers, mugs, etc. So check out the link in the description. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how clicking on a link and going shopping for Teslas, power walls, solar roofs, anything on Amazon, all of that stuff helps out the channel. Thank you so much. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is Dr. Noah it all knows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.